What's up, Internet? This is All Pro Media, Adam and Sean, here to discuss two gimbals today for your pleasure. The Ronin-S by DJI and the Moza Air 2 from Goodson. Now, both of these gimbals came out last year. The Ronin-S came out right after the Zion Crane 2, which had very promising specs and really good reviews. The Ronin came in and was the workhorse. It's a very popular favorite amongst filmmakers, but out of nowhere, Goodson released the Moza Air 2, which is... The sleeper. Basically, this is a surprise for everybody. I don't think anybody expected Goodson to release such a great gimbal right behind the Ronin-S. They pretty much took what was slightly missing from the Ronin-S and made sure that this had it. And they even took away some of the weight. Uh, we'll get into those details in a bit, but... They're great gimbals, guys. Let's talk about each of them one at a time. Adam here is gonna talk about the pros for each gimbal. What's great. And I'm gonna talk about the cons, so let's get into it. All right, you two, let's get into the Ronin-S by DJI. This thing is hefty. It's built like a tank real heavy sturdy rubber and really good plastic you don't feel like it's going to fall apart the motors feel strong the movement's very smooth regardless of that it feels like it's built really well and i think dji did a great job with that i think that's one of the biggest pluses when you compare these two the build of it really helps you achieve those smooth cinematic shots I mean, even up to running full speed, it's gonna look pretty smooth. Now, with my experience using other gimbals, I had a problem, no matter how well I balanced it, no matter what I did to keep it stable, it the horizon would always shift, and it didn't seem like once it shifted, it would right back exactly where I wanted it, especially on the Helix Jr. by, by Lettuce 35 we'd have to set that down and reset it and basically go go from scratch every time it would do that. And that's just, it, it, I mean, if you're shooting run and gun, if you're shooting a wedding or if you're shooting even for a client, you don't want it to be encumbered by that. I mean, it, it's a problem. So with the Ronin S, we pulled it out, tracking uh, my daughter's running, uh, other kids playing on the playground, Sean walking down the street. I mean, everything that we did, even if the horizon went off because we, we had an erratic movement, it would write itself very easy. The joystick, all right? This is a new feature, at least for us. Um, the joystick is on, on the back where your thumb is. It's very easy to access. Once you fine tune it to your movement, you don't want it to, to be so sensitive. You don't want it to, to move really fast. You want smooth cinematic movement with it. It's a user adjustment. You have to get accustomed to using it, okay? Um, it, for us, like I said, it's brand new. So adding this to like your thumb movement, it's not difficult, but it's just something you have to perfect basically, like anything that we do. Something that I really enjoy about the Ronin S and the Moza 2 for that matter, the recenter feature. Uh, if you double tap the trigger, it recenters it back to where it starts when you, open, when you, when you actually turn it on. And that will actually save time um, compare, okay, for instance, with the Helix Jr., you didn't have that feature. Like I said, once it went off, you couldn't recenter it back. So that's just a good feature overall. And the Ronin S has a really quick response time on that. Gimbals that I've used in the past, when you actually touch the camera, the lens, the motors kind of go crazy. With the DJI and the Mosaire, if you wanted to sh actually not use the, f if you don't have the follow focus on the DJI, because the DJI does not come with that follow focus, whereas the Mosaire 2 does. But if you didn't want to use that or if you didn't have it and you wanted to focus your lens actually like manually, you can do that and not really disrupt your footage. I'm not saying you'd want to do it in the middle of a live shot, but it's pretty smooth and imperceptible for the most part. One of the best features that I'm kind of remiss in mentioning until now is the battery life on both. But on the Ronin-S, it rates for 12 hours of battery. Um, I, I can't say that I've ran it through the full 12, but I used this thing for basically a week and it still hasn't ran out of battery. Um, it, it supposedly will give you eight complete hours of total use if you just used it straight through or if you used it for a full eight hours of shooting, it would last eight straight hours, but there's probably a chance that you can go over that. On the bottom, you have two threads where you can mount things to. You have the, the larger and the smaller one. 
and we elected to put a quick, I mean, Frodo quick release plate on this so we could put it on tripods. And again, I'm talking to wedding cinematographers a lot when I say this because you can put one on and you still have the ability to put it, put it back on the little, the little tripod here and set it down or actually put it on a large tripod and because you have such long battery life, you can just leave it running and that can be like maybe your aisle shot during the, during the ceremony. And it's actually still running, so when it's time to go back into motion, you can just grab it, quick release it, and you're good to go. You don't even miss a shot. That is awesome. Out of the box, when you balance this thing, when you're putting a camera on it, it's really, I mean, it's the easiest gimbal I've ever balanced. You've got, you've got this plate right here that's gonna take you both front and back or side to side. Now, the side to side thing is actually pretty important considering that the Moza Air 2 doesn't offer it. And I think that's a flaw and I know why they did it and we'll talk about that later, but I think it's a flaw because it makes the balancing on this exactly, exactly accurate. And the last thing about the Ronin S I'm gonna discuss that's a pro for us pros is the app that, that you use to, to control any of the configuring and any of the motion parameters, any of that stuff. The app for it is extremely easy to use. I think I've seen other YouTubers talk about it's basically the best app they've ever used for a gimbal. And I'm gonna move on to the Moza Air 2 now because it is also a fantastic gimbal. And while there are differences that we can gripe about, really they're both fantastic. The first thing we're gonna talk about, same thing with this. Like when you go to grab it, go from this to that, you can feel it. it is extremely light by comparison. Now, maybe extremely is a bit too far, but if you shoot on this for a few hours and you pick this up, it feels like going from a like a, a little like a like a giant truck to like get into a Yaris or something like that. Um, it's it, it feels like it's mobile and it's ready to use. Like this is what I would call run and gun. The trigger, okay, is actually in a spot where I would call it a trigger. Whereas on the Ronin it's almost like a button because it's oddly placed above where your finger wants to go. The application that you use to program and set the configurations for the Ronin is not needed, at least not every time, with the Moza Air 2. You can control all of it with this awesome little OLED screen, or OLED, OLED screen, and you have all of the controls right here on this dial and menu switch that you can change your configurations at literally the touch of a button. The fact that not only does it come with a focus wheel, but in the box you also get the iFocus uh, control box. And it makes balancing kind of odd. However, having that on the same handle as your other hand, whereas you don't have to remove one hand and change your balance, having that one hand removed from the barrel and having to like change it on the lens does make it more difficult and it can affect the look of your shot. It comes with this awesome thread for mounting and a lot of people use that to mount their uh, recorder or monitor, or I'm, I'm sorry, monitor recorder, um, or another handle. I've seen people do that with these. They, they mounted a handle. Um, for the infinity mode, you know, that might be applicable because it is, it is a strain or it is more, more of a, a task rather to like hold it out like that. Another great feature that Goodson offered was an additional four hours of battery life. And it seems like the Moza, or it seems like Goodson was like looking at the Ronin S and was like, all right, all the stuff that's bad about this, we're gonna add to this to make it better. So that's another thing. They added four, like you, you wanna add, fine, we'll give you 12 hours with this. Goodson's like, we'll give you 16 with this. That's four more hours. Now, whether or not you get like the full 16 or if you just get 12 out of it, I mean, think about that. That's 12 full hours. That's not like a 12 hour day where you're on set walking around and getting food. That's 12 hours of nonstop. The Mose Air 2 flips over really well to go low if you want to do that. It does, in my opinion, slightly better than the Ronin S. It seems like the motors deal with it better. Neither are in optimal position when you're in that mode, okay, when you're doing that, those low shots, so you don't want to go crazy with them. But it seems like the Mose Air 2, for whatever reason, handled that better. I don't know. With all these pros, there are definitely cons. Let's turn it over to Sean and see what he has to say about what you don't like about these. One thing about the Ronin is it's heavy, like you can feel it. Holding it for long periods of time, your forearm is gonna get tired. Especially if you're using the focus wheel and holding it with one hand for long periods of time, all of the weight is on that one arm. So you're just gonna like really wanna switch over. On that note, 
with the weight, when you go into inception mode, you basically are holding the entire weight of the camera, especially if you have a, like a heavy lens, just it's like right on your wrist and that's hard to hold. So if you go into inception mode, you're not gonna wanna do it for long periods of time. You, and you're gonna wanna use, you're probably gonna like need to like hold it with like two hands and it's still gonna be heavy. On the Ronin, you would think because it's a filmmaking tool that it would have some kind of quarter 20 thread or something for mounting accessories like microphones or monitors. The only place you can do that is on this bottom piece right here. But the two screw sizes there are so close together that you can't use both of them. You can only use one or the other. So I think that's something that could be changed. On the Moza, there's actually a thread right here uh, specifically for mounting options. And I like that it has that. I think the Ronin could definitely use something like that. So one con, is that you have to use the DJI Ronin app to make any real adjustments to the Ronin. Uh, even when using inception mode, it doesn't come straight on the Ronin, which the Moza does. It's, they just like built it in. Um, basically, you have to configure things and, and kind of set it to where it can go into that mode. Uh, it doesn't have a screen on the Ronin like the Moza does where you can actually change a lot of settings just right on this without an app. So I think that's something that can be in like the Mark II version of the Ronin S. So that's pretty much all I have to complain about the Ronin S. Uh, like I said, both of these work great, uh, but now I'd like to get into the quirks of the Moza Air 2. On the Moza Air 2, it has this sliding plate so that you can get the front and back weight of the camera and the lens, perfect. But the Ronin S was so thoughtful the way that they set this up because you can slide it back and forth and you can slide it side to side to get it just right. And I think that that's something that Moza completely missed that would be really nice. I think Goodson decided that instead of having the side to side motion for the plate, they wanted to add extra ports for their accessories. So there's a lot of electronics in here which are keeping it from being able to move that way. So I think, you know, when they decide to make a Mark II, that's definitely something they should look into. So now we're getting a little picky. Um, I did say that the Ronin was heavy, which is a con in my mind. However, it feels hefty. I don't know. When I'm holding the Ronin, I feel like it's going to last 10 years. When I'm holding the Moza, I feel like, you know, it can last like two, three years. So I love that Goodson in decided to include all of these features and access to the menu and the settings of this gimbal right on the handle itself. However, you have to learn it because there's so many buttons on it that you're going to start getting confused and be like, Did I, should I hit M? Should I hit S? Like, what am I doing? But once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad, but because they're all there, you're like trying to hit the joystick and you start hitting all the other buttons by accident. And you might be in the middle of a shot and accidentally hit the auto-tune feature and the whole thing will just start shaking. On the Moza, they made it to where you can actually take the batteries out of the handle. So that way you don't have to take the whole thing apart. But like when you're trying to actually take it off, you have to push this thing down so hard and then it's not very convenient to take them out. Look, it's just, you have to like dig them out. And even then it takes like a few minutes. I don't even know if I can do this. <laughs> How do you even get these out? See, you see what I mean? So we use cinema lenses on our cameras. Now this thing balances on our A7S II, on the Ronin S, no problem. But when you start adding the eye focus that comes with the Moza Air 2, it's really hard to balance. And they made this in a way that the Titan screw actually hits the edge of the lens when you're trying to like connect it. And I don't know, it's just a bad design. 
for the follow focus. I'm glad that I have it, but it really could have been thought out a lot better. So for our tests, we had to put our beautiful cinema lens aside and grab some photography glass and put this gear wheel on the focus ring uh, in order to actually balance and use the follow focus. Once everything was on there, it worked pretty good though. So that's my list. Each of these gimbals are really good. Uh, every user is gonna have their own nitpicks for each of them. So I'd say, you know, weigh the pros and cons, see which one you like better, what works best for you. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you do like this content, please subscribe to our channel, hit that like button. And if you have anything to say, whether good or bad, please comment. And we will include links to both these gimbals and accessories in the description below for your convenience. And if you don't mind excusing us, we're gonna go shoot some stuff, even though it's like 17 degrees outside. But you know, we have coats, so we're good. We'll see you next time, internet. Wait for the bell. <laughs>